Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, I, I saw Peter Irwin's title for his paper that's coming later in the session as sort of wind at height, friend or foe, and I thought, this 2F kind of provocative question, I like that. So I just kind of tacked an extra couple of words onto my title, so I thought, the harvesting wind power from tall buildings, which is a title that was given to me by Anthony Wood when I foolishly asked him what he'd like me to talk about. I agreed and then hung up the phone and realised it wasn't something I knew very much about. So I'd better start learning. So I've, I've tacked on the words future or fad. Because there's a, there's a lot being talked about, let's get wind energy in tall buildings, isn't it a wonderful thing? And everyone's making it look like it's really just quite easy to do, slap a couple of turbines on the roof and away you go, and isn't it going to be wonderful? I'm going to provoke some questions today and, and ask whether that really is the right way to be going to make best use of the wind. So if we look at our basic equation of wind power generation, our power is a function of the wind speed cubed. It's the first thing. So really, a cube, you know, you don't need to increase the wind speed much to get a massive increase in power. So therefore, what we're looking for is speed. Where can we get the highest wind speeds and make, make use of them? Well, most of us have seen this kind of figure before, where you've got the wind speed increasing with height. That all, all looks good, so that's suggesting, yeah, top of tall buildings, great place to put wind turbines. You get up there, you've got higher wind speeds, you can really take advantage of that. So far, so good. This is a trace of about an hour of wind speed. So that's the wind speed going there. And what you see is that it's not steady. It's turbulent. Wind engineers, every time you speak to a wind engineer, turbulence, turbulence, turbulence. Doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether it's responsive tall buildings, it's controlled by turbulence, cladding pressure is controlled by turbulence. I'm going to show you why turbulence is so important in determining whether wind power will work in tall buildings. So we've got three, three traces there. We've got our la longitudinal velocity, which is the velocity we normally think about. And there are also two other components due to turbulence. Because turbulence are like big bubbles of air rolling around in the wind there. So as well as getting gustiness in the direction of the wind, you also get some gustiness across the direction of the wind and up and down. So you get three components of velocity, each of which can have an effect on different types of wind turbines. So that's a wind time history about 30 meters off the ground. So let's go a little higher, up to 170 meters, which might be up near the top of a tall building. What do we see? Well, first thing we see is that the mean wind speed, you can see it's about 30 meters per second there or 30 miles an hour, any unit you like. Up here, it's about 35. So we've got that increase in wind speed we're looking for. Wonderful thing. What else have we got? Well, we can see up there, the wind speed is fluctuating from what, about 20 to 40? Yeah. Here, much smaller fluctuations between about 30 and 40. So it's reduced turbulence. And that's a wonderful thing because wind turbines like nice smooth flow. That's when they operate best. So that again is saying, yeah, this is all looking good. We get up higher, we get higher wind speed, less turbulence, better operating wind turbines. So the next thing to think about is, well, let's talk about wind climate a little bit. Because that's what's going to tell you whether you've got enough wind to make this work. We always hear about prevailing wind conditions. Do we really have prevailing wind conditions? This is just a wind rose from the composite of Dubai and Sharjah airports. Um, I could have shown you Dubai and Sharjah separately, and you'll see they actually look quite different in some ways. Don't always rely on the data you see from airports. There's, often it's bad data. But what we need to look at here is let's look at this. We can see we've got contributions from quite a number of directions. A lot of wind turbines are only going to work efficiently if you say you've got a horizontal axis, if you've got wind coming from within so maybe a 45 degree sector. So which 45 degree sector would you take there? Well, you say 
Well, let's look west through northwest. But add that up, and you've still only got about 20% of the time the wind's coming from those directions. Are we really interested in all this blue stuff down here? Well, not really, because that's low wind speeds. That's less than four meters per second. So we need to be looking out here. So let's take that little wind rose and transfer it up to about 300 meters above the ground. So we've taken it up the wind profile. So what we see is we've got a lot more higher wind speeds, as we would expect. And then say, well, that's what the wind conditions are at the airport. Is that the same as the wind conditions I expect in my site? Often no. So let's just transfer this across to our site, in this case, just next door to Burj Dubai. And we see, well, there's really not much of a difference at 300 meters. It's fairly similar. You can see some slight differences there. And that's as a result of the slowing effect of some of the buildings in between from some directions. Let's do the same exercise at Philadelphia Airport. Here we go, 10 meters again in open country. Take it up in this case to just 122 meters, slightly shorter building. You can see the effect of much higher wind speeds. Transferred across the city from the airport to the city and suddenly you've lost those higher wind speeds. So you end up with wind speeds at 122 meters in the city that are very similar to 10 meters at the airport. So because of those surrounding buildings, you've lost all that advantage of height. That's a really important thing to do. So don't just start at the airport and think you can use that data. Here we go, Sheikh Zayed Road. Uh, I took that last week. Yeah. When we were thinking about uh, putting some wind turbines on the top of this, these lovely buildings here, I think, isn't that going to be a great idea? And then uh, by the time we got them commissioned from the manufacturers, a few other buildings had gone up around about. Suddenly we can't even see the building down there. Suddenly we've lost all our wind generation into the future as the city has grown up around our building. This is just plotted in a slightly different way. This is Denver. So if you're saying, what winds do I want to make use of in Denver? You say, let's have south-southwest round about there. That's our prevailing wind direction. Yeah? That, that would make sense. However, if we look at some slightly higher wind speeds, up above sort of 16 miles an hour, where you're going to get the most power generation, suddenly the directionality, the prevailing wind direction has changed for the winds that we're interested in. So be thinking ahead and think about the winds that you're really interested in. Look at the ranges of wind speeds you're interested in. So we've talked a little about, about wind climate. The first thing you've got to look at, and I've seen, I, I don't know, I've sat through a few presentations today where people have been talking about wind energy and tall buildings, and I've seen some rather doubtful wind roses. So let's look at the type of turbines that might be used. Vertical axis. This is a twisted Darius type. Generates power through lift and drag. The lift on these things can be adversely affected by turbulence. It breaks up the lift component. So again, increasing the turbulence, these become much, much less efficient than you would expect from the manufacturer specs. This is just a typical power curve for one of these. Up you go. This is a fairly small one, two and a half kilowatts. And you see you're only really starting to get a decent power output above about 10 meters per second. So you're needing some reasonable wind speeds to get things out of this. A slightly different version. The H Darius generates power through lift and drag again. So again, we've got a turbulence issue there. You're not going to get the manufacturer's performance out in a turbulent environment. One good thing is it might be a bit more rugged than the last one we looked at. We make these into some quite remarkable sizes. This is one of the larger ones, and that's getting up to about 50 kilowatts. So there's a huge range in these sizes. 
we looked at a couple of projects recently looking at a lot of different types of turbines. And you can go out there and find out, and there's maybe 40, 50 manufacturers you can find on the internet manufacturing turbines suitable for sticking on buildings. And the vertical axis ones, you'll find there's only maybe six or 10 that are actually in serious production and have some kind of track record. So the vertical axis, Savonius, it's a drag device. So less sensitive to your turbulence, but it's got less efficient, and really that doesn't look lovely. <laughs> That's the one the architects all like. It's the one the architects ask for every time. <laughs> Horizontal wind axis wind turbines. That's what you see in your wind farms. Strung out along. Yeah. To get any decent efficiency out of them, they need to point into the wind. As soon as you've got a wind coming at an oblique angle, so if you fixed it at the top of a tall building, you're going to get an awful lot less power out of it. And that's an easy thing to demonstrate. Just take your kiddie's little model airplane and try and blowing on the propeller from the side. It's not going to move. So they're really well suited to large scale applications such as wind farms. The design of those large turbines is much more mature. They're in major production. They are pretty sensitive to turbulence and velocity gradients over them. So if you've got a range of wind speeds across there, you're going to be in trouble. Such as, this is a picture taken a couple of weeks ago at Texas A&M University. This is the tail of the turbine. It's meant to point in the same direction as those. It sheared itself off in that high turbulence environment. So if we look at the wind flow around the building, it goes over the top, around the sides, down the bottom. So you get this accelerated flow over the top of your tall building and a separated region there. But you're saying, well, I want to put my turbines on that leading edge. Makes sense. You don't want them in the middle because there's no flow there. But if you stick them on that edge, they're only going to work a quarter of the time if you've got winds equally from all directions. So you've got to have that lined up with the prevailing wind direction. When the wind's coming from the other directions, you're going to get very little power out of those. Again, you get accelerated flows around the corners. Possible, you could do that. And then you can have the effect, like we've seen in the Bahrain World Trade Center, of increasing the flow through by compressing between a couple of buildings. Quite often, you're not going to get as much advantage from that as you might like to think. So, going back to our wind time histories, here we are, 170 meters, same one we saw before. This is at the same height, just above a building. Look at the difference in the fluctuations. You might have a slightly higher, getting up to some higher speed, but it's wildly fluctuating. It's very unstable. That kind of environment is going to tear any decent sized turbine to pieces. There's just a plot from a couple of directions. Wind speed above the side. This is only 22 and a half degrees apart over the edge of a top, tall building. Up here, you see that, you've got 0.5 to 1. The wind speed there is twice as there. And that's only over a distance of about 10 meters, which is not an unreasonable height for a large vertical axis wind turbine. It's not going to work well in that environment. So why would you put wind turbines on top of your tall building? Reduce power at a high initial cost. Yeah. Main thing is make a really visible sustainability statement. It creates an identity for your building. So the world can see and identify it as the wind building, and you get a couple of lead credits. But my question is, in the projects that we've looked at so far, putting turbines onto tall buildings, and these are not tall buildings that have been designed specifically around the turbines, we're getting typically about 2% of the power output that we would get from one large commercial horizontal axis turbine out on a wind farm, an open thing in an open site. So the question is, is it really sustainable to be putting your wind turbines on your building? Or are you getting more bang for your buck by investing that same money in a large commercial wind farm outside the city? And there I'll finish it. Now, thanks very much, Will. But, um, that's very, very good. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just fantastic to start off um, with somebody who's been controversial.